uh, welcome everybody today I've got something very important to talk about and that's the the breastfeeding the sufficiency of the breastfeeding uh, this is one question what every mother has asked throughout the eternity and will continue to ask uh, probably from thousands of years back for another thousand years this question will arise from every mother um, uh, is my position okay and uh, my breastfeeding is sufficient for my baby or not this question will always be asked by every mother across all the races and across all the populations let's see and uh, try to answer this question as much as possible positioning uh, for breastfeeding is very important among the many positions uh, described uh, the lying down position cradle hold cross cradle hold the football or the clutch position uh, these are the most commonly used positions by all the mothers let's get in detail with all of that lying down position is a very convenient and comfortable position for both mother and baby this gives rest for the mother but make sure both the baby and mother are alert and awake at that point cradle hold this is the classical form of breastfeeding as you can see uh, this mother is feeding on her left breast the left arm is supporting head and the rest of the body this is convenient for mothers who have had uh, a vaginal delivery and a full term baby so this is probably the most comfortable position for most mothers cross cradle hold this again is a very convenient and comfortable position for many mothers in this case as you can see the mother is feeding on the left breast but she holds the baby uh, including the head and the rest of the body on her right arm this is convenient for mothers whose babies are very small and where there's a difficulty in latching some mothers find it very comfortable to breastfeed football or the clutch hold as you can see the baby is held like a football and the rest of the body goes behind this is convenient for mothers who need to feed twins at once latching of a baby is as important as positioning the baby make sure baby's mouth is wide open lower lip is turned outside chin of the baby touching the breast black part of the breast not visible below the lower lip large black portion of the breast and nipple including the milk collecting ducts are inside baby's mouth and tongue under the teeth tongue is seen only when the bottom lip is pulled down while feeding the ears wiggle there's a circular movement of the jaw rather than a rapid chin movement cheeks are rounded and we do not hear any clicking or smacking noises and we can actually hear the swallowing noises this can simply be achieved by touching the cheeks of the baby with your nipples with this the baby will turn its head and open its mouth towards your breast at that time offer the entire breast and just not the nipples some mothers are not able to do a proper latching when in this case we can see some consistencies and that is mouth not being wide open chin far away from the breast baby suckling only on the nipples most black portion of the breast that's the areola is outside the baby's mouth and tongue away from the nipples let me know in the comment section what you found most convenient and comfortable position so let's discuss it out and let's talk more on that how do we assess the adequacy of the breastfeeding? If you're done with the latching part, majority of your problems are done. So let's uh, dig deep into that. First thing is positioning. If you're done with the positioning part and the attachment part of the latching part, you're done. You don't have to worry about whether you're getting adequate milk or not. Just for the confirmation purposes, we're going to ask a few more questions to see if breastfeeding is really sufficient or not first of which is the uh, uh, the urinary output as per the textbook it is said uh, six to eight times urine in a day is more than adequate for uh, the uh, to say that the breastfeeding is adequate or not but in reality we see babies passing 25 to 30 times of urine in a day uh, and that says the breastfeeding is totally adequate 
And the next one would be the stool output. If the baby is passing a required amount of stools, that again says that the breastfeeding is totally adequate. But this may be a little confusing at times because some babies pass once in a day stools, some babies pass 10 times in a day and some babies pass once in a week stools. All of them are totally normal patterns. So uh, as long as you know what's the consistency, what's the stool pattern and how much is the baby is passing stools on a regular basis, you know that the feeds are totally sufficient. Next is the infant cues. After a successful uh, breastfeeding session, majority of the babies sleep for two to three hours conveniently. They don't seem to be disturbed. They are not uncomfortable. They smile in between and they wake up fresh. This again says that the breastfeeding is sufficient. And the most important cue when you're looking at your child is, uh, you know, your baby smells good. These things say that the breastfeeding is totally, totally sufficient. The last one would be the weight gain. For the first five days, all babies lose weight up to, you know, five to eight percent, sometimes 10 percent. They come back to their birth weight roughly by 10 to 14 days. If the baby takes a much longer time than this, that says something is wrong. The breastfeeding is not sufficient. And uh, on an average, uh, we expect babies to put on roughly 30 grams per day. Uh, sometimes baby grows at 20 grams, sometimes grows at 40 grams a day. All of that is totally normal. But on, on an average, we expect babies to grow roughly 30 grams per day. By all these measures, you would know uh, the breastfeeding is sufficient or not. Um, you know, thanks for tuning in like subscribe share among your friends and discuss in comments section that uh, what was the weight pattern of your child and what kind of difficulties you found during breastfeeding